All right, well, our next article, Derek, is called Epistemology at the Gemba, and it was written by Harish Jose, and it appeared in Monday's issue of the Quality Digest newsletter. You can see it right there. Hopefully you're going to tell me what epistemology means. I am going to. Well, yeah. you know, Harish actually explained what epistemology right. is, and it can be considered uh, as the science, or maybe the philosophy. I, I kind of look at these both ways. Okay. Um, the science philosophy of knowledge, uh, as, as Jose writes, epistemology asks, quote, how do we know things, and what are the limits of our knowledge? It's kind of the the knowledge of knowledge, okay. you know, it's the information about information, you okay. know, it's, it's the study of knowledge. Uh, Joe's offers in this piece a fascinating and detailed, there'll be a brief, history of Western philosophic inquiry, which necessarily dwells in the realm of epistemology. From Plato to David Hume to Stephen Pepper, rationalism to empiricism to logical positivism and interpretivism, right? Uh, Joe's covers a few centuries of thought in just a few paragraphs. <laughs> I, I love this stuff. I mean, the, you know, the historical scope of this. Yeah. I mean, he really did a great job. Yeah. I mean, he went through in like a couple hundred words. Yeah. He went through a couple hundred uh, centuries okay. of thought, of, of, of Western thought of, about thought. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> right, right, really right. interesting, interesting article. Um, and you know, because of, the, of who he is and who we are and what we're publishing, he brings it back, of course, to Lean, uh, of course. and and. Through some of the examples, he shows how the Toyota production system, as well as Toyota's production system, he kind of says okay, there's a okay. distinction there between those two things. He shows how that was affected by epistemology. And, and you know, the application to the Gemba is really natural. If you think about it, I mean, after all, the entirety of lean thinking is really an exercise in challenging common wisdom or current understanding. Once you can explore how and why you believe what you believe, you can really a lot more easily incorporate different ways of thinking, maybe superior ways of thinking too, not just different ways, but maybe okay. better ways of thinking too. Um, lean tools that benefit from imperial, uh, um, empirical epistemology, uh, and there's several of them, and, and some of these Joe's mentions in his article, some of them kind of came to me as he was, he was writing this. Um, and this one, of course, he talks about because it's right in the title, the Gemba Walk. Um, there's, there's a, a quote that he, he uses from Toyota, look with your feet and think with your hands. <laughs> I thought that was great, right? I mean, that's yeah. really what, what the yeah. Gemba Walk is all about. You walk around, you know, those that are working really are learning as they're doing, um, which is an empirical way of, okay. of, of learning things. Um, but you know, you're know you observing, you're able to, as a, as a manager, go around and see what's happening and begin to have this, this understanding of, of what your actually your process really is. So the Gemma Walk's really important. Uh, the Ono Circle is another one. I mean, that's really the power of pure observation. Sure. You know, yep. it kind of goes along with the with the, the Gemma Walk, and we all know the Ono Circle, where Ono would draw yep. the circle and make his young manager stand in it for <laughs> hours, um, and without any food or water. <laughs> no, or, no or bathroom break for you. break, um, nothing. Um, but that's really the power of pure observation. Yeah. I mean, if you stand in that Ono Circle for a couple hours, really, and you watch the process, and you really watch it, you're going to see a lot of things. Sure. You know, you're going to really understand why things are done the way they are, maybe why things shouldn't be done the way they are. So that's really valuable too. Uh, the next one is the five whys, and you know, we're talking about imperialism, empir empiricism. Mm -hmm. but rationalism has its place too. Rationalism, which is really more that pure thought, you know, right. knowing things through you thinking of them yourself rather than experiencing them. But rationalism has its place here because the five whys really is this thing where you're questioning, you're questioning, you're questioning, you have two brains, or many more, maybe more than two brains, interacting with one another and saying, well, why is this happening? Why, right. why? You're finding the root causes, that's really valuable too. Uh, and then 5S, you know, um, or really any lean tool, you can put any lean tool there, 5S is a good one. Um, because really, before you implement the tool, you need to know why you're doing that implementation and what you're seeking to learn or improve from the implementation, you right. just do it it's dirty, let's 5S it. I mean, you don't, yeah, you're not yeah, getting you don't to the why. heart yeah. of why yeah. you're really yeah. doing it. So that's really a, a, an, an opportunity to learn too. I mean, ultimately to me, epistemology comes down to, to the old four quadrants of knowledge. You know, we, we always talk about these things. And really in order from, you know, I, I look at these as dangerous to, to not so dangerous in okay. the way I think about these. I mean, um, the four quadrants, the first one really is the not knowing what you don't know. And that, of course, sure. to me, is the most dangerous because, right. you know, you're just cruising along, you may think everything is great, but there's there's gotchas out there that you don't even know about. Yeah, aware of, So right. you can't even take any action to even change them. So, you know, you need to, to take an empirical or a rational approach to maybe trying to find those things out. Um, then maybe you go to the not knowing what you know, which is less dangerous because, okay. I mean, you, you know things, but you don't realize you know them, which is a problem. Right. But yep. generally speaking, if you trip over and you say, well, actually, I did know how to do that. Right. That's not so bad. Um, 
Then you get into the knowing what you don't know. That's really a powerful place to be. Right. If you know what you don't know, you, you can say, all right, let's take the opportunity to address these, to so learn about these things and figure out what, what they're gonna be and how we can improve. And then finally, there's a knowing what you know, which is the safest place to be. It's a place of safety, but it also may be a place of stagnation. I mean, when you right. stay <laughs> in what you know, right. and you don't explore beyond that. So to me, knowing what you don't know is really the place maybe where you wanna be, right. more than anywhere else in that four quadrants. And you know, how you move through those quadrants and how you move into kind of, of a higher place of knowledge really is, is the goal of epistemology at the Gemba. Um, and you know, it's not just at the Gemba, you know, we have a couple minutes, but I mean, it, it's also in our personal lives too. You know, I mean, if you're gonna be a person that wants to fully engage in the world and learn things and be right. able to be better at what you do or just have different experiences, you have to have kind of a, of a process in place to learn, to, to, to bring knowledge in and to actually use it. Because if you don't right. do that, you're gonna be stuck, like I say, in the, you know what you know, and you just never get beyond that. That's I think, I mean, uh, <laughs> oddly enough, uh, it, it comes down a lot to asking questions. You know, I it mean, ask, asking questions will help you understand, will move you through a couple of those steps anyway. It'll help mm -hmm. you get to the point where you know what you don't know. Right. Because some, you may ask a question, somebody may introduce a topic, and you may go, or, or a technology, or an anything, and you would go, well, I, I didn't know such a thing existed, or, or tell me more about that. If you or, can listen. If you can listen. That was what you are. Dirk, Dirk wrote a great article, article this right, week, yeah. by the yeah. way, about this very topic. Is, is, if you is, can properly listen and, yeah. and bring that in. That's, yeah. that's an important part of that, too, is, yeah. is being able to interact. Well, I, I think, uh, I mean, all of these kind of touch on that listening in some form or another. Whether you're listening to another person talk, listening to the process, which right. is going to the Gemba. The Ono Circle is about listening, but listening visually. Yep. Uh, I mean, all of these, if you re get right down to them. Listening with your eyes. That's good listen, listening with your eyes, exactly. <laughs> um, so, I mean, really, I mean, it's funny, it's just done on me, but if you think about it, almost all of this, almost all learning comes down to listening on some level. Like you said, whether it's listening with your eyes or listening by touch, basically using your senses to bring stuff into your mind that you otherwise wouldn't have known. Yeah. And that, that can involve everything. Every Seeing, hearing, smelling, touching, it's, it all goes into all there. All the senses, yeah, 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 yeah. that's exactly yeah. right. Probably, that's pretty cool, that's yeah, pretty great. cool. Harry shows is really, yeah, yeah, he's, really he is. terrific, he's, he's a good writer. writer. Yeah. Really, really good stuff. All right. Yeah.